The best health care is there in ways big and small. There when we most and least expect it. We may not see it, but we feel it. It lets us know we're not in this alone. Everyone deserves a health care partner who never quits. One who's there for what matters. United Healthcare, there for what matters. Want your boss to put some real action behind the rhetoric when they talk about making your workplace more inclusive? Find out how to hold their feet to the fire and demand diversity on the Diversity Dude podcast. Hello there, and welcome back to the Diversity Dude podcast. I'm your host, Lambert Fisher. Marriage and Family Therapist, award-winning author, and national speaker on the topic of multicultural awareness and diversity. And for those of you who are interested in even more positive and encouraging tips and strategies beyond what I share in podcasts like this, then feel free to check out my award-winning book, Diversity in Clinical Practice, nationally recognized for the unique way in which it addresses the often difficult topic of multicultural awareness and diversity. Designed for more than just therapists, if you're a helping professional in any way, diversity in clinical practice can help you meet the greatest variety of cultural needs possible for those whom you serve. And it's available in paper and audiobook versions for your convenience. And whether it be through my one-on-one relationship building efforts as a therapist or my informing and empowering efforts as an author speaker, know that my personal mission is to do my part to improve the world one strengthened relationship at a time. So today I want to share with you a few encouraging words about the ABCs of DEI. Depending on where you work or what you've read or watched online or what conversations you've had with family and friends or even random strangers, you may or may not have heard many times over the acronym DEI. For each of those letters represents something intended to create a healthy experience for all, not just for some. Diversity for all, equity for all, and inclusion for all. For many, however, the DEI acronym is just a combination of letters that represent forced conversations about diversity policies and procedures, enforcing change to make people who have complained happy and punish anyone who doesn't get on board with that change. As a result, the mere mention of the letters DEI often evokes strong emotions and exasperated expressions of here we go again. Now, In an effort to preserve DEI goals while accommodating people's aversions or negative experiences with the unfortunately ineffective execution of DEI policies in their environment, some have even seemingly added to, added some missing components to DEI efforts with new letters. Depending on where you're at, you may have even seen new acronyms such as DEIB for belonging, or A for accessibility, or J for justice. With the right combination, some have even used cool words like idea or Jedi to convey those messages as well. And while the goal of these efforts should remain to highlight additional ways to meet a greater variety of needs and ways that have proven to have been unmet previously for various historical or even current reasons, there are times when the ABCs of DEI have served as a source of division and polarization within otherwise like-minded individuals. I've unfortunately seen helping professionals at an organization that promotes DEIB efforts look down on another organization that only lists DEI efforts as if to convey that they don't really care about their employees or customers unless they don't add that B or A or J. And here's where I feel compelled to share a unifying message, one that contributes to more shared efforts to create culturally safe environments for everyone instead of one that stifles these efforts based on a hyper-focus and on the small things. To do this, let me take a moment to provide an admittedly oversimplified description of some of the most commonly used diversity acronym letters of D, E, I, A, B, and J. First, diversity stands for, or D stands for diversity. And diversity simply refers to how all humans have similarities and differences beyond race and ethnicity. Diversity includes, but is not limited to, characteristics such as race, ethnicity, culture, gender identity or expression, age, uh, religion, national origin, work sector, physical abilities, sexual orientation, socioeconomic status, education achievements, marital status, language, physical appearance, and cognitive differences, and many more. Promoting diversity isn't about one group being inherently good or bad, but of creating an environment where similarities and differences are not only just tolerated, but accepted and appreciated as a part of what makes the whole great. E stands for equity. 
equity refers to not only treating everyone fairly, but also bridging gaps and disparities that persist unnecessarily. Sometimes this means reallocating resources, not to blindly take from the rich and give to the poor, but instead to acknowledge and identify circumstances where, due to circumstances beyond someone's control, some don't have the same resources, opportunities, or the luxury of equal treatment and taking steps to bridge those gaps and disparities. I'll admit this process takes creativity to ensure that helping one person doesn't put someone else in the same in need situation that needs to, needs to be supported. However, I've been pleasantly surprised by the creative options I've seen over the years of how new resources were developed that provided for those who had less and allowed those who had more to keep what they had. The only thing that they lost was the unearned lead over someone else. The I stands for inclusion. Inclusion refers to intentional efforts to make everyone feel included, valued, and respected. This can be done not just by hoping someone feels like they're part of the team, but by intentionally welcoming them, hearing their contributions and concerns, inviting them to be a part of team projects and more. I've learned that someone can work in the same office and even hold a similar job title, but still feel like an outsider because they were not included in similar ways as their coworkers. And A stands for accessibility. Accessibility refers to intentional efforts to make sure everyone has access to resources and opportunities and removing unnecessary physical or organizational barriers to such. You can accept diversity and even invite people to join and feel included, but if not everyone has the same access to the same opportunities, then those invitations may feel insincere. I see this often when companies or organizations provide programs in the suburbs of a big city, but wonder why they don't get diverse participants in their groups or programs, only to later discover that while there was interest, the socioeconomic status of their desired population is such that they only have public transportation access in the city, but personal vehicle accessibility is the same. This is confirmed when the company or organization provides the exact same program in a rented facility in the city and the number of attendees significantly increases with no content or program changes necessary that made the difference accommodating differing accessibility needs can become a mutually beneficial endeavor and b stands for belonging belonging refers to intentional efforts to make everyone feel as though they are a valued member of the team or reluctantly or more so than reluctantly accepted or tolerated while similar to inclusion Whereas inclusion often conveys the message that we will be happy to include you too in our efforts, as opposed to directly or indirectly leaving you and your needs out. Belonging conveys the message that we will include you and in your needs because you are one of us. We are together, which makes your needs our needs as well. You, you are part of this group. So all of our similar and differing needs matter. Not just you as the outsider can be included. You belong to this group as well. You belong, we belong, we belong together. And J stands for justice. Justice refers to advocating for marginalized individuals or groups. And as I've discussed in various ways previously, you can advocate in different ways and advocacy doesn't always have to look the same way for everyone all the time. Some choose to advocate directly with a bullhorn or a protest march or a petition or gathering letters written to decision makers to make significant change. And still others choose to advocate indirectly by planting seeds in personal professional conversations with people who have varying degrees of influence in their families or communities. For even if you only help one person improve their perspective on others, by doing so you are advocating for the improved treatment of everyone whom they encounter. You see, D-E-I-A-V, J. These letters represent efforts to do pretty much the same thing. Create culturally safe environments where everyone feels seen, welcome, heard, included, defended, supported, and the list goes on. But the focus isn't the list or the right or wrong combination of letters. Whatever letters happen to be on the policy and procedure manual in your work environment, make sure that you are doing your best to recognize that the goal is to capture the essence of all of these words and letters and much more. I'm reminded of how LGBT transitioned into LGBTQ and then LGBTQ2IA and is now often referred to as the LGBT community. 
for it was never about the exact makeup of the letters or making up new letters, as some try to say, as much as it was and is about utilizing the convenience of a few words or uh, or letters as an acronym to represent a much larger uh, group of identities and aspects of who a person sees themselves to be and how they share themselves with the world. In this case, the, the plus represents that much more. Without desiring to co-opt the plus symbol from the LGBT community, I wish there was a similar DEI plus equivalent, where DEI itself could represent all of the other additional words that can stem from it, instead of a need to chase more letters to be act to be effective. Where, if additional letters are desired to show a strong value by a certain organization, then great. But all those who choose DEI alone can feel confident in knowing that when they say DEI, it's clear in their actions and their effectiveness that effective DEI includes accessibility efforts and belonging efforts, justice efforts, and more, all depending on what is needed in their environment for those whom they serve. That is what I mean when I promote diversity efforts. I'm not speaking about promoting an arbitrary percentage quota of people from different racial or ethnic backgrounds. Instead, when I pr promote diversity efforts, I'm promoting the cultivation of personal and professional relationships where everyone feels safe to be themselves, embrace their similarities and differences with those who are similar to them or different from them around them in their environment, and contribute to efforts to help make everyone around them feel the same way. My hope for you is that you will be able to see past the limitations of acronyms and value them for what they are, no more, no less. Then, no matter what diversity efforts happen to be around you, that you will be able to preserve the essence of all those letters of D, E, I, A, B, J, and more, such that those around you don't care about what letters are on your website or your policy and procedure manual, but instead they care more about how you make them feel and how you're able to help them live their best lives possible. And with that, I'll say thanks again for listening to the Diversity Do podcast. If you have any pressing diversity related questions that you'd like me to address on an upcoming podcast, or if your organization is in need of a shame free or empowering guest speaker or training on this often sensitive topic, then feel free to reach out to me directly at www.diversitymadesimple.com. And if you know of anyone else who can benefit from a positive and encouraging perspective on this often difficult topic of diversity, feel free to send them a link to this podcast so they can be encouraged as well, or share with them my award winning book. Diversity and Clinical Practice, available at Amazon.com. And as usual, I look forward to addressing as many topics as possible in future podcasts to help you improve as many relationships as possible at work, at home, and in your community. And as always, remember this. You don't need to know everything about everyone in order to have a positive impact on someone. Thank you all for tuning in, and have a great day. Tune in each week and find out how to demand and implement diversity at your job. To hear more, check out previous Diversity Dude shows on ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. My grandmother was very often the only black person in the room, very often the only woman in the room. There are some men who still consider us little girls and ladies. I didn't recognize how pioneering her activism was. Young black millennials for years have been asking me, why do you stay in the struggle? Why do you have hope? People say we're made up. Tall tales. Myths. Think what you want about us, but we can all be certain of this. Recycling is real and it works. But what happens to your recycling once it leaves your home? Recycled glass is sorted in St. Paul. Then the clear glass is made into bottles for drinks, pickles, salad dressing, and more in Shakopee. At other facilities, plastic bottles get made into new plastic bottles. Recycling exists. Learn the real story behind recycling. It's not just another day in your life. Things are changing for the better. At Comcast, we see those changes and we're thinking about how we use technology today to live, work, learn, and play. And we're building for the future now, so we're better prepared for the wants and needs of tomorrow. That's why Comcast is rolling out multi-gig internet speeds to more than 50 million homes and businesses before the end of 2025. 
making our already industry-leading network even faster, smarter, greener, and more reliable. Over the decades, Comcast has been your partner, working hard to serve your community, and will continue to be your partner. We're expanding our gigabits so you can enjoy the tiny bits that matter most. You know Shaletta makes you laugh, but did you know Shaletta Brundage can also make you think and boost your business? Media personality, activist, and comedian Shaletta Brundage founded Shaletta Makes Me Laugh to celebrate and share the best of black culture. It's a podcasting platform. You can download 10 weekly podcasts hosted by African-American subject experts at ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com or wherever you find your favorite podcasts. ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com is also a production house creating broadcast quality commercial content. And Shaletta and her team of storytellers create powerful promotional campaigns to get businesses the brand awareness they're looking for. Some of Minnesota's top businesses trust Shaletta, and you can too. Get out the word about your events and products and get in front of communities of color with ShalettaMakesMeLaugh.com. She's got the power to help your business. Taking a COVID-19 test is easy, painless, accurate, and can be done anywhere, including in your own home. The self-test takes about 15 minutes, so you will quickly know your results. Testing is recommended if you have symptoms or have been in close contact with someone who tests positive for COVID-19. It is a good idea to keep self-test kits on hand at home and when you're traveling. That way you're ready to test if you have symptoms or have been exposed to someone who has come down with COVID-19. Every household in Minnesota is eligible to order free at-home rapid test kits while supplies last. To get yours, go to sayyeshometest.org. That's sayyeshometest.org. The free test will be delivered to your home. If you do take a test and get positive results, isolate at home for at least five days. Seek medical care if your symptoms do not get better or get worse. And remember, Staying up to date with vaccinations remain the best way to protect yourself and others. Are you a woman known as a good listener? Do you have skills in de-escalating situations? Are you what they call a people person? Then the Minneapolis Police Department would like to meet you. Now in a rebuilding phase, the Minneapolis Police Department is recruiting more women to wear the badge. The department offers career options for women with a high school diploma or GED. There are also opportunities for women with two and four year degrees who are ready to apply their skills in new ways. Police work makes a great second career for social workers, teachers, nurses. Women in their 30s and 40s are welcome to apply. There's no age cap. You'll be paid while you train and mentored by veteran women officers invested in your success. Minneapolis also welcomes current police officers to join the state's largest department. Make a difference on the streets, working in your community, in a career with competitive salaries and generous benefits. Go to MinneapolisMN.gov and search police jobs to find out more. 